underpass here. There's a portal to another world, crossing through Dick Turpin's tunnels into the forest. So I looked at my list of walks this morning, very long list, some of them suggested by your wonderful selves, and I just couldn't decide where I wanted to go today, and I procrastinated, got involved in doing some admin, and in the end it got to like two o'clock basically, and I just thought, I'm just gonna leave the house and wander, let my feet guide me, go into the forest, why not? I'm actually starting my forest walk today in Leightonstone, right at the Green Man roundabout, I know I've done quite a few Epping Forest walks, but in my opinion, you can never do too many Epping Forest walks. So I hope you enjoy coming along on this, what I think we can confidently call a spring ramble. So just through the tree line there, you can see the behind the rear of the famous Snaresbrook Crown Court, which I'm sure you'll have heard read out on the news. I think it was originally built as an orphanage and an infirmary. Victorian, a grand Victorian pile. Well, this footpath I'm walking along here goes right along the, the boundary between the London boroughs of Waltham Forest and Redbridge. So we're right in the corner of the borough here. Of course, the trees are still bare. We're waiting for the leaves to be coaxed back into life. I hope you all went out and wassailed the fruit trees in the winter so we can expect a good crop. So just through here, I'm gonna show you one of the curiosities of Epping Forest. I'm not sure if I've shown you in a previous video. Here we have the birch well, which I think was a trough for, uh, for the cattle that grazed here, perhaps even horses. I believe it was once quite deep. Now I think the bottom has been filled in so it doesn't go down too far. And of course, despite its humble origins and its prosaic usage, it appears to us as a kind of mystical pool in the forest. It seems I was mistaken here. The Birchwell wasn't an animal trough, but an important source of water for the local people. It's even been suggested that it was a, a mineral spring, a medicinal spring, and may have even been known as Wanstead Spa at one point. What can you see reflected in the magical waters of the birch well? I mean, we can just create our own mythology for this, can't we? And there is this stone nearby, which I'm not entirely sure I've noticed before. I guess it must be associated with the well in some sort of way. And actually just a little bit further along, look, we have a metal post here. And beside it, over there, another stone. I guess these actually could more likely be boundary markers. Certainly the stones could be boundary markers. There's some text on that uh, metal post there, but I can't quite make it out. Eagle Pond, the Snares Brook. Always a really wonderful spot all year round. I always thought this was a very fine council estate here, opposite the uh, Eagle Pond in Snaresbrook. Classic bit of, I think, probably just post-war, isn't it? So the post-war or 1930s. Epping Forest signage there next to the uh, Welcome to the London Borough Waltham Forest sign. And of course, the London Borough Waltham Forest is this year's London Borough of Culture, the very first. And I will be doing something for the Borough of Culture, hopefully announced soon. From the point 
a view of making uh, videos for this uh, YouTube channel, I was trying to, to think of new places to go, of interesting kind of routes to take or themes for the walks. But then on a purely personal level, sometimes when I go out for a walk, I just want to walk over familiar ground. And uh, today's an example of that. It's, uh, I find it incredibly, it's quite an intense experience actually, because what you do get is you get these kind of waves of memory as you're walking through your past really. And uh, it's, um, it's a different experience to when you're, you're breaking new ground and going to new places and exploring. It's a different kind of journey. Important bit of information if you're gonna follow this walk. This is a bit of a decision point here in terms of how muddy do you wanna to get. To the right is not quite as bad. You're walking through sort of scrubby bit of forest. To the left is one of the uh, wettest places on earth, which is the way I'm gonna go. This must be some kind of uh, watershed here because this field is always absolutely sodden and covered in deep thick mud, which is why I love it. I think it's called um, Gilbert Slade, if memory serves me right. There's almost apocalyptic levels of mud here. I mean, just look at this. I think they've been doing a lot of work in the forest recently, so dragging a lot of uh, logs and stuff out. A big challenge on the next stage of this walk is to uh, see if I can get past Chingford, because as soon as I get within the orbit of the pub at the hunting lodge, it usually just sucks me in like the Death Star, and that's it. Wish me luck. circular. I'd love to make a recording of the sound of this cattle grid using some contact mics. Should make a real symphony of cars on the cattle grid. So this is uh, another insanely wet patch of ground usually, but it is a delightful little uh, walk down here. There's a lovely little pond here, by side the road on the edge of the forest. These, uh, these bulrushes, reeds. I try to make sure I come for a walk in Epping Forest in each of the seasons of the year. It's a great gauge of the, the changing patterns of nature. And the last time I did a walk was, oh, was it about a month ago, two months ago? I walked up to the Royal Oak and then back down again to Loughton. Just a really lovely walk. I didn't make a video. This is a walk I've done a few times on here. I don't know whether to declare this one the uh, spring Epping Forest walk or not. What do you think? Today is the 24th of March. We've seen the blossom, we've heard the bird song. I mean, does that indicate that spring is here? I think officially speaking, it might be next week. I'm sure somebody will know. I don't mind admitting that despite the many years of walking through here, this is the little bit here in Woodford that sometimes catches me out. You, know, you see this little housing estate here, the forest path brings you that way. And sometimes I just erroneously carry on in a straight line, which brings you out onto the road. But actually what you have to do is you have to go down the hill, down this way, and then pick up the River Ching at the bottom. This is one of my favourite little 
patches of the forest. Something about the clear ground beneath the trees, which gives it a very special feel. Now this is a truly magical spot. I really love it here. The lake at Hyams Park was created by the famous landscape gardener Humphrey Repton sometime in the early 19th century. It's a really beautiful park here beside the waters at Hyam Park. It's a really delightful open space. Different parts of the forest have uh, different characters. That sound, should sound fairly uh, obvious in a way, but as I'm walking, approaching Chingford, I realise I'm approaching the end of what I consider one body of the forest. The part of the forest which shares particular characteristics and the section from the Green Man roundabout through to Chingford Plain and the Hunting Lodge that has a particular feel to it, for me anyway. And at that point, at Chingford, you enter into the rump of the forest, the forest proper, the dense forest. So I'm just wondering whether the walk naturally ends at Chingford or whether I cross over into another phase of this uh, glorious, great, open space, London's wilderness, Epping Forest. Some kind of pagan tree offering here, tree dressing made from uh, the wrappers from throat sweets. It's obviously some sort of thing to ward away sore throats, I think. How wonderful. Look at that, the beguiling magical waters of the River Ching trundling its way through the forest floor here. This really is a, a beautiful little river. One of my favourite London rivers this. How glorious is this? It smells incredible as well. It's very pungent wafting out across the footpath. Solitary, slow and wayward. That's the, uh, a quote from uh, the great topographical writer and broadcaster from the 1930s and 1940s, S.P.B. Mays, author of books such as uh, It Isn't Far From London and This Unknown Island. I love that. Uh, Little phrase, those three words, solitary, slow and wayward. Today has certainly been slow. A little bit solitary, but certainly been slow. It's uh, quarter past five. I'm not even at Chingford yet. Left home about quarter past two, so it's taken me three hours to cover. Not an enormous distance, I'm not sure what the exact mileage is, but can't be more than five or six miles. But hey, sometimes it's good just to take it easy just to stroll, to amble, to go solitary, slow and wayward. Not wayward today though. Hey, maybe I'm learning. So just up there, where the River Ching crosses the road, you'll see the Waltham Forest sign there. So you're re-entering Waltham Forest up there as you enter uh, Chingford. And we're gonna go here, you've got the bridge there across the River Ching, the old stone bridge. And we're gonna go here. I think it's a White House Plain, I believe. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. It's like something from It's a Knockout. Like it's deliberately being put there as a kind of obstacle that you've got to traverse. I'm actually going to find a way to walk around it. Sometimes you do have to wonder where everyone is. It's about 10 million people in London. Look. 
Nobody here. I'm not sure if you can make this out, but the green sign here on the right, that's the uh, London Borough of Waltham Forest sign, welcome to, and just over the road there you can see the sign saying welcome to Essex. Here we've got one of the borders between London and Essex. This is Rangers Road by the way. Many interpretations of uh, the name London, where it comes from. One of them uh, is it said to me, I think it's from the Land Inn, which I think is like wealth, and it means uh, an enclosure in the forest. And when you reach the edge of London like this and the border into Essex, you start to see London as that enclosure in the forest, don't you? Coming out here, it really reminds me of the the territory of my childhood up along the A40 where the woodland meets the edge of London where we were last week actually when we were over sort of Uxbridge, West Drayton and you feel it there don't you? So many of my forest walks end across this patch of ground here approaching the hunting lodge feels like the appropriate end today as well Thanks, thanks so much for coming along with me. It worked out all right, didn't it? Just uh, letting my feet guide me along the forest paths on a magical walk. And it was uh, wonderful to have you along with me. It does look like I am going to get sucked into the pub at Queen Elizabeth's hunting lodge, as I inevitably do, and it is the perfect place to end a forest walk. I know I do a few of these, but it's just irresistible to walk in London's wilderness, in Epping Forest. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Mm -hmm.